We set aside a time to get together one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, to talk and fellowship together. And that's what the Lord wants with us, face to face. There's a place in the Old Testament called the Holy Place. Outside of the temple was a big foyer, a room where people met and gathered and talked. Sacrifices were made. They talked about the Lord. They talked about their lives. But when they wanted to have fellowship with the Lord, they left the crowd, went through a veil into a room where they were all alone in the presence of God. There were three things in that room to remind us of what the tabernacle in heaven is like. Moses made this earthly tabernacle after the one he saw in heaven. Solomon copied that same pattern. And in this holy place on one side is a candlestick. And it represents the Holy Spirit who brings light into the world, into our lives so that the light of the glorious gospel shines into our hearts. And that candlestick represents the work, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And in the center was an altar of incense with the smoke and the smell rising up to heaven to Father God. And on the right side of that room was a table with 12 loaves of bread, representing the people of God. And it was meant for fellowship and intimacy between God and his people. It was called showbread. It was called face bread, face to face. And the priest would go into that room and there was the bread and the wine and he could fellowship with the word, the bread of life, which represented Jesus Christ, our savior. At the last supper, Jesus offered that loaf of bread to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This represents my body. They were in a circle facing each other. Pat, if I offer you a piece of bread, you wouldn't turn around so that I offered it to the back of your head. You wouldn't turn sideways, so I offered it to your ear. If I offered you a piece of bread, you would turn and face me, and as you were eating and receiving it, you would be looking at me face to face. That's what Jesus did with his disciples. This represents my life. This is me, the bread of life, and I offer it to you face to face. And if you'll come face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ and receive that bread, you will receive eternal life. And in this room, the incense, the praise, the thanksgiving rises to heaven for what God has done in our lives. And the candlestick reminds us that the light of this glorious gospel is shined in our hearts. That place was available for the priest. And you and I are priests unto our Lord, and we can enter into that place. But it's a choice that you make. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's the door of your heart, the door of your life. And Jesus is saying, if anybody will open the door, if you will open the door, I will come in and I will have that fellowship. 
I will have that communion with you. I will dine in fellowship, personal one-on-one -on -one communion with you. And I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you to the end of the age. And then you can come and live with me forever. That's what Jesus offers us when he offers the bread, face bread, to our face. He loves you very much. And he wants to have that communion. He wants to have that fellowship with you. If you will open the door, I will come in and dine in fellowship with you. That is what communion is for us. One-on-one -on -one fellowship with the Lord. Face bread. You have a container in front of you. If you'll open the container in front of you, there's a piece of bread there that is a symbol of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. He took that loaf of bread and he broke it and offered it to his disciples. And they were sitting there in that room face to face as they took that bread and received him into their lives. That's the vow, that's the commitment that we're renewing every time when we take communion. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we hold in our hands this emblem of the body of Christ. It represents the life of Christ. It represents the fellowship, the face-to-face -face intimacy that you want to have with us, even now on this earth. Lord, we've received the divine nature on the inside. The blood keeps us clean and have fellowship and communion with you. Lord, by receiving this bread, we are renewing our vow, saying, I take you, Jesus, to be my Savior and Lord, to have and to hold from this day forward, forsaking all others, to love you and to cherish you in good times and bad times, in sickness and in health. This is my solemn promise that I make for the rest of my life. All agree with that, say amen. Let's partake. The Bible says, at the end of the meal, Jesus took a cup, one cup, and said, this represents my blood, which is shed for you. They had one cup. The Bible says we all drink from that same cup. I know in today's society and with hygiene, we all have our separate cups, but we need to remember there's one blood shed by one person who is the savior of all. This is my blood. Blood with awesome power, cleansing power in the blood of the lamb. Not just to cleanse us one time, not just to cleanse us that first day or night when you received him, but the blood of Jesus keeps us clean every day, every hour, every minute. It's a continuous cleansing. And that's why we can continue to have this intimate fellowship with him. He has made us worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. We are kings and priests unto our God. And so by taking this cup today, you're saying, Lord, keep me clean by your blood. The song says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is no other name under heaven whereby men might be saved. So as we partake of this cup, we are reaffirming our faith and confidence that the blood of Jesus has cleansed us and is cleansing us from all sin. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the life that we have 
through Jesus Christ as we receive him into our lives as Savior and Lord. But even though we're born again and we have a new heart, a new spirit, Lord, the outward man fails and falls short. And we all sin. But the blood of Jesus is meant to keep us clean daily. So, Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sin. Cleanse us. Keep us clean by your blood. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. And by drinking this cup today, we are reaffirming our faith and confidence that it is the blood of the Lamb that has cleansed us, that is cleansing us from all sin. We receive it in his name and all agree say, Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I pray this lesson in this time of fellowship will encourage you to have intimacy. Find a place every day where you can have intimacy and fellowship, face-to-face -face time with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. We love you. We thank God for you. Have a great day in the Lord. You know